Father and judge of the nations. Remember, before you with grateful hearts, our veterans, the men and women of our country, who on the day of decision ventured much of the liberties that we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until the peoples of this land that share the benefits of true freedom may gladly accept the duties and disciplines that true liberty demands. We pray for our country, we pray for our recent election, we pray for our president-elect, pray for our unity within our country. We uh, pray in a very special way as we pray for our country, that indeed we may always be one nation under God, indivis indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Hawkeye Veterans Day Ceremony. My name is Michael Whalen. <coughs> Next to me is our Commander Eric Sonner. I'm the adjutant for the local American Legion Post 202. Each year on November 11th, we meet to honor all veterans, past and present, especially those from Hopkinton. The Legion believes it is important to keep this tradition alive and we appreciate everyone's attendance this morning. There will always be conflicts and wars, and the need for servicemen and women will always be with us. We can show future veterans that they will always be supported in their hometown by our actions and words we speak today. Here in this room sit students, veterans, family, and friends of veterans, all of the common denominator. We are all Americans. And we all feel safe because of the sacrifices made by those who have served our country in the past and those who are currently part of our nation's military. There are many places on earth where the daily bloodshed is a fact of life, but the American servicemen and, and women whom we honor here this morning have given us a protected place to raise our families and live our lives without fear. There is security and strength strength that comes from our military, a military made up of individuals that have the sense of duty and the patriotism to become soldiers. Again, thank you for being part of this ceremony. And now, I'd like to introduce Camden Crum, who has a poem he'd like to read. <coughs> to read you a poem about Veterans Day. This poem is called Thank a Veteran by Brittany Schivertsburg. Thank a Veteran. Today is the day we honor the noble and the brave, the men and women who dedicated their lives and the sacrifices that they have made. When America had an urgent need, they were the first to raise their hand. Without thinking twice about it, they were proud to take a stand. Some came back from war with battle scars, others in flapped, draped coffins. Even though their flesh may have left, their spirits will never be forgotten. They unselfishly and knowingly put their lives on the line. So when you see a veteran, thank them. Because without them, freedom would have died. Thank you.
Right now, I'd like uh, Maura Hennessy to come up here. She has uh, just some interesting things that uh, she works on uh, concerning veterans. Hi, everyone. I'm very honored that Mike asked me to talk for a few minutes today. Um, so I work for a program through Hamilton Capital. It's called Heroes with Hearing Loss. <coughs> and we're very passionate about this program. Um, my uncle was in Vietnam. He was in the Army. And my grandfather was in World War II. So we're very passionate about helping the veterans. And in this program, we're helping veterans with hearing loss. And basically, we're just trying to raise awareness. Um, a lot of times, hearing loss gets overlooked because veterans are dealing with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, um, combat wounds, and they often overlook hearing loss. So we're trying to offer some resources and start the conversation about how important it is to deal with the hearing loss and find the appropriate resources. Um, one of the resources that we do have is a captioning phone, and it's free to any veteran with hearing loss. Um, I do have it displayed over there. And you um, just need to get this form signed, which I do have over there. You can get it signed by a veteran service officer or your doctor, and you get the phone at no cost. Um, you can pick which phone you want. We have a digital one or a standard one, but we're happy to um, help you install it, help you with any questions you might have. Um, so definitely come and find me. I also have business cards over there. If you know a veteran with hearing loss or if you are one yourself and you have any questions, um, we'd be happy to help you. And again, it's Heroes with Hearing Loss and it's through Hamilton. And thank you everyone um, for listening and thank everyone um, for your service. Thank you, Mom. Some of you might know Mary Harrington. She's here today uh, with her latest research on uh, a fallen uh, Hopkinton veteran. Mary? Thank you. Thank you to all the veterans who are here who represented the town of Hopkinton with such a uh, good posture and we welcome them home and we're glad to see so many of them here today. Just as an overview, uh, I started about four years ago doing a bio on the 12 top kitten men who lost their lives in World War II. And uh, with the help of uh, Arthur Lowell and his wife, today I'm able to honor Arthur's brother, George Roland Lowell. George Roland Lowell was born on April 23, 1923. He was the sixth child of Frank and Florence Lowell, and, <coughs> excuse me, and grew up on Hayden Road Street. He graduated from Hopkins <coughs> High School and was the captain of the 1940 <coughs> uh, football team. He enlisted in the U.S. Army on February 13, 1943, and received his tra initial training at Fort Devens at Camp Lowe, Texas, as well as Camp Livingston, Louisiana, and Camp San Luis, uh, California. After six months of training, he returned to Massachusetts and left for overseas. He was promoted to Staff Sergeant and received the Expert Infantry Badge, Expert <coughs> Rifle Badge, Good Conduct Medal, and the European Campaign Guard. He was stationed in Germany and served in the Black Hawk Infantry Division. He was wounded in action on April 25, 1945, during a training session after throwing himself onto a live grenade that was accidentally dropped by one of his men. He died from his injuries on April 28, 1945. He received the Purple Heart. He was married to Grace Curley of Milford and she gave birth to his daughter, Georgiana, <coughs> who was born two days after his death. Today we have with us his only surviving sibling, Arthur Judd Lowell and his wife, Barbara. Thank you. We have uh, three select 
Blackman here to, this morning. I'd like to recognize Brendan Tedstone, Claire Wright, and Brian Herr. And uh, rumor has it Brendan has some words to say. Thank you. I don't normally need a microphone, but. Uh, hi, guys. I'm not speaking to you as a selectman. I'm speaking, well, I am speaking to you as a selectman, but I'm speaking to you from my heart. Um, the veterans have always, always, always meant a lot to me. Um, we had a guy in my street, Cook Cumlin. Um, guy was like a father to me. <coughs> the other guy, Mr. Lavoy, my football coach growing up. Uh, and I look around and 99% of the people that I see here, I know and I love. And it's, uh, it really is amazing to be able to come up here and speak to you guys. Um, everyone's involved when it comes to um, veterans. Your families, your kids, your friends. I'm involved. I never spent a second in boot camp. I never spent a second in the service. And because I can't keep it completely serious this whole time, I'll tell you a joke. The difference between involved and committed. I'm involved, <coughs> you guys are committed. Your veterans are committed. You have the most dangerous job ever. And thank God that you guys all came back and you're sitting here listening to me. I did nothing. The, di the difference between involved and committed in, an egg, in, a, in a Sunday morning breakfast, the egg is involved. The pig on a ham and egg breakfast is committed. <laughs> so from the bottom of my heart, I thank you guys. And there's nothing I can say that would even begin to portray the admiration and support that I have for you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, now in addition to the opening prayer, uh, Father Cannon has agreed to speak to us a little bit about Veterans Day. As you know, um, Father Cannon has uh, some experience in that. Father Cannon. Thanks, Mike, and uh, what a very moving story that was given about that uh, veteran that died. And you said there's, there's uh, people are here? Some people are here right now? Well, are they? Just me. Can you stand up, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for serving, and uh, geez, it's very humbling to be here uh, before veterans, and. Uh, it's really, you know, you know, we pray. Also, a special thanks to Michael for asking me to be here. And I asked Mike beforehand on the corner, how long, when the speaker speaks here, how long does he usually speak? It's my first time doing this. And he says, well, you know, just you have a free reign, do what you want to do. But remember, people's attention span. You know, <laughs> my attention span's not great. Uh, but anyway, this, uh, we're celebrating our 150th anniversary as a parish this year. We're very fortunate to have our Cardinal Archbishop came out uh, two Sundays ago. He spoke to us, he was really great, and he spoke to us one time about many things, but about prayer too. He said about the difficulty of prayer, and uh, you have to, you know, keep your attention. And he said, it was a story about uh, two guys arguing about uh, prayer, and one guy saying it is hard to pray because of that intention. The other guy said, oh, it's no big deal. You can rattle off a prayer without losing your concentration. You know you can't. He said, I'll bet you my horse, you can't get through the app, Father, uh, without losing your concentration. Your horse? That's right, my horse. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Does the saddle come with it? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, with that in mind, we'll try to be uh, brief here, but we have to do justice, of course, to our veterans. And we're here to honor our veterans, our men and women, uh, for their service, for their sacrifice, those who have uh, fought for our country, and those who have died for our country. You can stop and you think about it, hear the story that uh, was given 
uh, that debt to our debt veterans can never fully be repaid. And, and we're doing our best as a community to try. I have, Michael mentioned it very briefly, but I have very limited military experience. It's all Navy Reserve. In the early 1980s, I was in a seminary. We went down to like a chaplain school at Navy in Newport, Rhode Island, in the Navy, and uh, there was about 120 of us, you know, priests, uh, you know, uh, Protestant chaplains, uh, rabbis, and so on. About 120 of us, 40 groups each, 40 divisions. In the military, they divide you up, and they, you know, they give you your name of your division, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Very, you know, no imagination, but that's the way it goes. That's the military. We didn't like that name, me and this priest friend of mine. And we could think of a different name for our division. And we were led by uh, Rabbi, Rabbi James Apple. And he was a really kind of a character, but a good, solid, solid guy. And my buddy said, you know, he's such a good guy. We should name our company after him. We named ourselves the Apple Corps in honor of Rabbi James, uh, <laughs> James Apple. And so anyway, a Lieutenant JG, reservist from uh, the Apple Corps, is pleased to be with you uh, this, evening, this, uh, this morning. get through my notes. Uh, you know, this, uh, this last May, I was very honored to finally go to a place where I always wanted to go was West Point. It was a family <coughs> wedding. My niece, uh, my cousin married uh, this guy, uh, Nathan uh, Wood, in the military. He's on the uh, graduate of, an, uh, of uh, West Point, and then he's on the Ranger School now. But I mean, you just can't help, when you go to West Point, I mean, what a feeling. Uh, George Washington, our president, was up there in that fort before it was a school. And all those great generals down through the line that had been in there, served at West Point and served our country. It's just phenomenal. We were walking by a building, and then one of the uh, cadets pointed out, oh, that's the hall where MacArthur gave his talk. And I just, boom, I mean, right away, you know exactly what he was talking about. In 1962, General uh, Douglas MacArthur <coughs> gave his farewell talk to the cadets at West Point. And that's a, a speech where he told those cadets about the, uh, about the those, expressing with the words, duty, honor, country. Duty, <coughs> honor, country. And those words sum up uh, what you should be, what you ought to be, and what you will be. Very moving. He goes on in that speech, he speaks about the American soldier. The American soldier uh, is a, is American soldier is the most heroic figure the world knows. What what uh, what words? I mean, McDonald MacArthur, the American soldier. And of course, he includes us guys who are in the Navy. <coughs> us, uh, and then he uh, concludes. And he includes, and again with those words, duty, honor, country. They should be like a tenfold be beacon in the darkness. Not just speaking to the cadets, but those words echo you know, to every American. Duty, honor, country. How often do you hear these words? Maybe occasionally at church. How often do you hear these words in public? Every time we come together and we honor our veterans, you know, these words resound. Whether they're spoken you know, explicitly or they're just seen symbolically through our veterans. And really, to this town, Hockington, does just a wonderful job uh, with Veterans uh, Memorial Day. You know, I think it's a beautiful parade. We go to each cemetery, remember, we pray for those veterans. And then we come down to the uh, town hall. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to see this young man come up here today. It's wonderful to see our young people. At that town hall Memorial Day, there's always that the uh, Hockington uh, band will play. It's always filled with, with young people. It's great to see it. And we thank our veterans for the service. We also thank you for what you, what you represent, what you bring to our town, what you bring to our young people. To remind us all about those words, duty, honor, country. You know, it's a, um, you know, it's funny, uh, uh, Brendan, uh, when he came up here and spoke, and Moira, Mara, when you come up and spoke to, how you mentioned family, the importance of family.
growing up, people that touched you as a, as a child, as a football <coughs> coach, or someone down the neighborhood, someone in your own family that served. You know, I'm just thinking about veterans here. I go, just remember my own house growing up. My uh, grandfather was a doughboy. boy. He married his wife, uh, my grandmother. 1918, he was stationed someplace in Boston Harbor. Um, and the store family, family story goes, that the Boston Harbor froze over. And he walked from wherever he was stationed, whatever island it was, over Boston Harbor, to come to marry my grandmother um, over at Our Lady St. Newton. I never checked out, you know, the uh, Google it and see how exactly the weather was like that, but that's a family story. We have my uh, mother's uh, brother, two brothers, uh, my uncle Joe, got a nice uh, soul. Um, he was he served in the Army Air Corps, and he had flew over 13 missions uh, from England over to Germany. He had a little diary, and to get one of those family heirlooms, and he's a 19, 20-year-old kid. I mean, he's nothing words profound like you'd find in the uh, Declaration of Independence or anything like that. But what struck you was three things that struck you when you read that. The importance of his faith. Before he'd go in that, before he'd go and fly, he'd always go to confession. He'd always go to mass. That reassurance that his faith brought to him uh, when he was going to die. Uh, what are his chances coming? <coughs> and then secondly, how often he wrote about his young wife Agnes, my aunt Abby, and how his thoughts would always go back to his family. As we mentioned again. And then also, uh, and thirdly, uh, he wrote uh, just one time, if, if you know anything about uh, those crews that flew in World War II over, over Germany and so on, uh, the casualty rate uh, was phenomenal. He just spoke about 10 good friends he had one day, the next day they're all gone. Just phenomenal uh, service and courage that veterans remind us of. And we come in. We open with a prayer. We salute the flag. Listen to different people talk about uh, families, including me. God, country, family. Those are the three pillars that have made this country great. God, country, family. You know, the words, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson spoke some words when he was president. I'm not sure what occasion those words. I'm not sure what document or letter uh, these words could be found in. Um, but he said, uh, as president, maybe it was just the uh, burden of the office. I tremble for my country. <clears throat> I remember God is just, and his justice never sleeps. Again, I don't know where these words were found, written and so on, but I know you can find them. They're written. And they're, in, and they're uh, inscribed in granite, the Jefferson Memorial, the Memorial down in Washington, D.C. If only these words were inscribed in the hearts of every single American. You know, whatever we say or whatever we can do really is not enough to repay our debt to, uh, to our veterans, but we do what we can and we try. We had our 150th anniversary uh, down in St. John's, and we had a banquet over at the at, at Milford, the Double Tree. We concluded our banquet. We all stood up. There was an American flag there. We all sang, God bless America. I'd like to impose upon you, uh, I can't sing a hoot. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, please stand. And let us sing, God bless America. <laughs> Thank you. 
It sounded great. <laughs> I was going to talk a little bit more, but I get to after that, I, there's no reason to. <laughs> but I do want to uh, uh, review the names of uh, those who have passed since our last Veterans Day. A list here that I I, I keep. Uh, it might be incomplete, but it's pretty close. As you remember, about a year ago, uh, there was a uh, uh, accident down in Natick there, and uh, we lost Ken McDonald. He was 73 years old, United States Navy. Uh, he was a, a resident here of Hopkins for 43 years, and uh, active in the Boy Scouts and with his church, and was survived by his wife, uh, uh, six children, and eight grandkids. And there was Anthony DeColibus, 88 years old, United States Navy. He was in the uh, automotive business, a, another World War II vet. Um, served a aboard the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt. He left uh, three children and six grandchildren, one great-grandson. Ralph Adams Cram. The second, 74 years old, United States Air Force, an architect, a senior center regular. He left his wife, Sandra, and his sister, Sarah. Frederick Mosley, 78 years old, United States Army. He worked at Polaroid as a tool and die maker. He left five children and eight grandchildren. He uh, coached ice hockey and Pop Warner football here in town. Walter Robbins, 94 years old. Remember him up on Pleasant Street, <laughs> United States Army. He worked at Denison Manufacturing for 39 years. He played for the Stone Throwers, 1939 graduate of Hockey and High School. Sebastian Jim Silvestro, 79 years old, United States Air Force, a truck and school bus driver, left his wife, three children, and three grandchildren. Edward McIntyre, 82, United States Air Force. He was in the masonry and construction business. He left three sons and two grandchildren. Dennis DeLage, 64 years old. United States Air Force, a 1969 graduate of Hockey and High School, Vietnam War veteran, he left his sister and a brother and his mother. Pasquale Dominic Greeno, 86, United States Army. Korean War vet, he left his wife and two stepsons. Bobby Evans, 77. Hockey High School grad, 1958. Worked 25 years at General Motors. Later as a groundskeeper at Juniper Hill. Harvey Krupnik, 71, United States Army. He served in Thailand during the Vietnam War. Teacher and baseball coach at Holliston High School for 39 years. Drafted by the Detroit Tigers. He taught hitting to hundreds of baseball players for many years, and he leaves a daughter and a brother. Gordon Marquis, 84, United States Army. He was a Russian language interpreter in occupied Germany after the war. Left his wife, two children, five grandchildren. He had worked for 30 years at New England Electric. Tony DiStefano, 94, United States Marine Corps. Worked over at Draper's for 35 years. Somehow got to be a master sergeant in World War II. Three, three children and five grandchildren. Johnny Cahill, 90 years old, 
United States Marine Corps. Hopkins and Postal Carrier, Iwo Jima, Purple Heart Veteran, <coughs> bartender to Lilith Carbonis. Left three children, four grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild. Michael McCaffrey, 73, United States Army. Lived in Hopkins and down Teresa Road for many years, was a retired New York City fireman and a manufacturing representative. Left a wife, two sons, a daughter, and a grandson. And most recently, we buried Morgan Malloy, 92, United States Air Force, World War II veteran, was a tail gunner on a B-25, worked 44 years at General Motors, left four children and nine grandchildren. That concludes our formal ceremony for Veterans Day 2016. Um, there's plenty of food at the end of the table there, at the end for everybody to enjoy. Uh, a couple other things where those of us uh, who choose are going to um, stick around a little bit and talk a little about Johnny Cahill. Uh, and don't forget tonight there's a dinner at the Woodrow Rodden Gun Club. Doors open at 5.30 or you can get there earlier if you choose. And uh, dinner is open for all veterans and if they want to bring a guest that's just fine. So thank you very much and have a good rest of the day.